Yeah, it doesn't matter. All right. Uh, let's see. Summary of viewer things. Uh, I think there's been a viewer promotion since the last of these meetings. Mate R, maybe. Um, Performance Floater is our uh, our favorite runner-up. It's been almost released uh, for uh, a few a few uh, few uh, iterations now, um, and uh, we're still still hoping to get it out. Uh, we've also got a couple of mates that are active, and a third one that's almost ready to go to RC. Um, thumbnails work is going well. That requires uh, changes to a couple of back-end services. There's an AIS update, and there's uh, uh, some simulator work. So um, viewer, viewer changes wouldn't be going out until all of that other stuff was fully deployed. But uh, we're, we're getting there. We've, uh, we've, already, uh, we've already added, we've already done the database uh, modifications to add the extra column, which everybody thought was going to be the hardest part, and uh, it's, not, it's not that bad anymore. So. Exciting times. Um, let's see. Emoji Viewer is coming along pretty well. We've got uh, some some internal review now, and we're uh, tweaking uh, tweaking some some UI for uh, for emoji selection. Um, this is based on a contribution from Kitty, so we're not uh, here today. Um, we're we're very uh, very happy to have that, and looking forward to getting the viewer out. Uh, materials is going to RC soon. We uh, uh, should have that out. Well, you know, you, you never know. New bugs can come up, but I don't know. Based on the current state, should be uh, should be quite soon. Um, when it's in RC, it's going to be working. The the new stuff is going to be working in a pretty limited uh, uh, pre-flight region. A pre-flight channel, but um, uh, you know, as we as we get more confidence that everything is behaving, we can we can go wider on that. Uh, I think that's it for our viewers. Uh, I should also mention that we had an addition to the TPV listings. Uh, the cool VL viewer is on there now. I um, don't know if uh, Henri is at this meeting. Uh, I'm not seeing him. Uh, so anyway, uh, check that out if you're into such things. Um, otherwise, I think that's about it for for pre-planned topics. Uh, folks have, let's see, do we have anybody from the graphics team? Uh, Cosmic, do you want to talk a little about what's uh, what's the latest with materials? Oh gosh, you know, to be honest, I haven't prepped too much. Uh, Dave P has been working on uh, further refinement to uh, lighting. Uh, there was a new dynamic exposure setting added. Um, and he's been uh, tweaking that, um, t making sure that that legacy content uh, uh, looks good uh, with the new, uh, gosh, what is it? It used to be linear, and then it uh, aces um, that thing. Uh, so trying to the, the tone play mapping with stuff. Tone mapping, right? Um, so yeah, that um, that that's been interesting. Um, Gins and I have been doing various fixing work, um, and I think that's that's about it re recently. Oh, and yes, of course, uh, Brad's uh, been continuing to look into uh, the networking stuff. Uh, we, we've pushed some changes to uh, uh, make the uh, or make the uh, materials load more reliably. And it seems to be working pretty good so far. Brad, do you have anything to add? Um, yeah, the, it, it's definitely better um, when when it's under heavy load. There are definitely some cases that, that can still fail. Um, so uh, I'm doing some some optimizations to hopefully reduce the, the uh, cases where it's under load um, and, and continuing to, to make it as robust as possible. But uh, yeah, that's uh, it's progressing. It should hopefully make it into that uh, 
make it into QA so that we can get it into that pre-flight simulator release uh, for next week, hopefully. Yeah, sounds great. Uh, so the expectation is that after materials goes to RC, um, you know, it's going to go out to a wider audience. We're going to have people who are, you know, just kind of minding their own business using legacy materials who are getting handed the viewer, and I think that's going to be a good test for how uh, how well our sort of graphics compatibility is behaving, seeing what kind of response we get there. Um, so we'll be uh, we'll be fielding bugs and fixing things for however long that takes, um, and uh, then then uh, getting it out to default viewer. Uh, let's see what else is going on. Uh, Ryder, anything to say about things happening on the server side of the fence? Uh, we have a, a new uh, the, let's see. There should be a new server going out next week to the main channel, um, but and then. Uh, Couple things with uh, uh, some some old long-standing bugs is 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 in the queue, and we have uh, an, another one dealing with uh, with region crossings. It's also in the queue, so keep an eye out for that stuff. Region crossings are going to be more better and faster, and all that stuff. Yeah, sounds good. All right, I guess the uh, floor is open. What uh, what are you folks up to, and anything you want to talk about? I can give you an update on our view if you like. Yeah, sounds good. So we released uh, 764, our version. Um, as we said last time, the search and replace links and search and, and delete links throughout the inventory, which is the Firestorm idea, which I believe you got in your viewer. We've added the ability to customize your friendship request instead of, would you like to be my friend all the time? You can also now drag and drop inventory from one tab to another tab without opening multiple instances of inventory. We uh, acquired some code from Firestorm, I do believe, for the hitboxes for combat players. Uh, they've been duly credited. And uh, the thing that the big thing we've been working on, which has been driving us crazy, is search options in preferences because the tendency on the way this was inherited, being a, a one, two, three, was that uh, you couldn't find anything in preferences, so you always headed over to debug where you could do tremendous damage because you could search in debug. So we actually put search now in preferences. Our only consideration is whether it should just actually search the setting itself or whether it should, should search the setting and the content of the hover text associated with it. We haven't quite made our mind up with that. We've also added the estate manager, um, commonly known as ban the bots. So that will be, um, that's the stuff that we're working on at the moment. There'll be another release as soon as we're, we're happy with it all. But finding estate managers to test the ban the bots thing is not as, is, uh, it's harder than you think. You said you've got a search option for preferences. Does this, does this mean you can kind of filter all of the debug settings from the from the preferences uh, floater? Yeah, we we've. It was quite a basic uh, preferences menu. Um, a lot of settings, a lot of facilities that were actually there were not in preferences. So we've added them to preferences, but of course it's got more and more complicated. So we've tried to add them to the right category, but you had to search around for things. So now you can put a word like voice in and it will highlight mm. left hand side of and, and show you every instance where it appears and you can go into those and poke around. So uh, from our point of view, it's much better because we didn't really want to encourage people uh, into debug. But 
old habits die hard so when someone asks for a setting invariably somebody else will come back and say you go debug and you change this value to that and we didn't really want that we're trying to be responsible mm -hmm. um and 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 doing it another way so search was uh, a nice bit of code that, that Mel wrote and took her a very, very long time because we had to build that bit from scratch. And, uh, yeah, we got it. Now, yeah, that, so sounds, that sounds cool. So you're searching specifically on the debug settings that are referenced in the in the preferences. In one well, of the it, tabs. Yeah, the search, anything the search exists on keywords. The search is on okay. keywords. That, that's all in the okay. preferences. It's not, not actually on the debugs named itself it's just whatever's in the, the settings okay and, and yeah. in the See, debug like, always had search and that was the problem um mm. debug always had search and preferences didn't have search so of course you head to debug if you can't find what you're looking for instantly and that's what we wanted to try and prevent i mean they can still do it that way if they want to but for the newer users we're onboarding the last thing we want to do is send them into debug where they've got you know they can do all kinds of damage yeah, I was just thinking we've added uh, we've added search to performance. Uh, sorry, we've added search to the debug folder in, in the not too distant past, and yeah, it is uh, it is a little bit of a uh, I don't know. It's a little bit of a sharp implement, you know. You don't don't really know what you're getting when you search through that uh, enormous list of things, or whether it's a good idea to change it. I've got a video somewhere, hang on, I shall post it. It's the only way to make uh, users uh, narrow down their preferences so that it gives them an idea where they're looking on, in the preferences tabs. There you go, and it's only 30 seconds long. Just a quickie. That's how it works. Oh, cool, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's really neat. It's uh, it's nice to be able to see the different um, options in context rather than just in a in a long list of whatever that is, you know. Yeah, thanks. Because um, yeah, like, that's a, a great bit of work by Mel. I wish I could take the credit for it, but I'm just the pretty face, you see. And the deep voice. Yeah, that's really cool. What else is going on? Oh, nice. So this is uh, rusty, but brand new, right? Right. Um, yeah, my main concern here is I don't want to turn it loose on the world. I basically want people to try it all the various flavors of Windows at the moment. <laughs> so uh, it's turned loose there, but there's a password. And it's not a big secret, but um, I wanted to make sure that Linden Lab has no objection to my, to my giving that out to small numbers of people at this time. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, as as long as the as the viewer isn't causing any problems for, uh, you know, back-end services or, uh, or... Uh, it shouldn't you know, be. I mean, you, you see me wearing my, my, my alt here is in that viewer, and yeah. you've seen yeah. 
me bring him to various events, and he's been all over the grid, you know, London City and so forth, without yeah. causing any yeah. problems. Oh, yeah, okay. I mean, that shouldn't okay. be any problem, then. Yeah, be, uh, be excited to, to hear more about how that goes. So what's the state of avatars? Is this... Um... Is this still static, or does it show avatars as well? Uh, sorry, I didn't catch that. Avatars are still showing as blocks. Oh, okay. So, the main thing I want here is I'd appreciate that people would try this on all the various flavors of Windows. Will it work on 7, 8, 9, well there is no 9, 10, 11. Um, will it work in sandbox mode? I'd ought to be able to work in the new tightly locked down sandbox mode if you enable access to the GPU, which is, uh, no. I haven't tried Windows 95. It will work under Wine. Um, I normally run it under Wine. I don't actually own a Windows machine. So I'm curious to see what happens when people try this on real Windows. This is all cross-compiled from Linux. Well, sounds great. What's the best way to get uh, feedback to you? Um, it says in the release notes, info at animats.com. Yep. Just email, email me. Not anonymous at all. I have Animats as a business. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's looking very nice. I'd be uh, curious to check it out. Yeah. Um. It'll be interesting to see what people. Well, there. It'll be interesting to see what people think. Basically, what you can expect is. Uh, you can you can get sixty frames per second, and you can get. Uh, 20 megabits, 200 megabits per second of downloading, but not both at the same time. There's a locking problem at a level, two levels below my code that needs to be resolved before we can maintain the frame rate while content is downloading. Is this just because the uh Textures are getting locked by the other threads while the downloads are happening? It's because the WGPU interface to Vulkan does not currently let you load content into the GPU while the GPU is also rendering. That's allowed in Vulkan, and my code supports it, but there's a bottleneck in WGPU, which WGPU people are working on. WGPU is a thing that lets you use uh, Metal, DirectX, uh, OpenGL, or uh, Vulkan, so we can get portability onto the Mac. So, so that's adding an abstraction layer. So you're you're actually coding so in WGPU. Uh, pretty much. WGPU is basically a Vulkan emulator. The top of WGPU looks a lot like Vulkan, but the bottom of WGPU can be some other things. The idea behind this is I don't have to deal with all the platform issues, I hope. So, um, it's a very limited viewer right now. One region at a time. Um, at, um, no, no animation. Motion works, but uh, texture animation does not. Um, it's always daytime. You know, stuff like that. no menus. Um, you, you, you can you can chat, um, uh, text chat, and that's about it. Oh, oh, and you're stuck in first person, um, so you have one viewpoint, and it's where your head is. It's a little too immersive operating in that mode. It's kind of fun. You can, you know, all you can do is walk around. Can't even fly yet. Jumping works though. Yeah, 
How are you feeling about rest now that you've gone through the whole exercise? Rust is fine. The Rust game ecosystem needs a lot of work. Um, I'm always running into problems two or three levels down from where I am. The language is solid. The main problem with the language is that you can't have back pointers. Uh, well, you can, but you have to go to full reference counting. And so there are some problems with, with heavily interlinked data structures. But other than that, the language is great. I mean, I've used a debugger twice in the last two and a half years, and both times it was because somebody's uh, non-Rust code at a lower level was giving trouble. Postability is pretty good. Oh, and the other thing is, this is designed for gamer PCs. Minimum is probably what the average Steam user has, which is an, an NVIDIA 1060. You can try lower if you like, but I don't promise much. I think a lot of the people running on lower end hardware aren't seeing very much uh, for frame rates today either. The problem is running out of VRAM. The, this thing puts a lot more in the GPU than most mostly other viewers do. And there's also the problem that the uh, one of the levels below me put in occlusion culling at the GPU level, and that is incredibly slow if you're running on one of the GPUs, which is trying to fake being able to do uh, compute shaders. Is that still an issue with more recent hardware? No, 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 no. It's, it's an issue. The machine that I'm running Firestorm on, the one that actually has the, this avatar, has um, an NVIDIA 640, and performance is terrible uh, in, 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 my, in my viewer with that. Um, the other machine has uh, an NVIDIA 3070, and things are just fine. It, it's more of new, it really is an issue with some of the older GPUs trying to fake being a modern GPU. I was actually expecting to be more more progress in GPUs over the last couple of years than there actually has been. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. You got the ray tracing and the um, and the AI frame interpolation, but in terms of just sort of raw performance numbers, the rate of progress has gotten pretty glacial, especially if you're looking at it per dollar rather than per. Uh, yeah, per, per dollar, dollar is the issue. You know, if you're willing to spend $2,000 for a GPU, everything is great. If you're willing, but you know, the $99 Walmart PC is hopeless. I'm not sure what to do about that. One thing I am considering is uh, putting my thing on NVIDIA uh, GeForce Now, where you get a standard GPU configuration that's pretty good, just to see what that looks like. Anybody played around with that with uh, server side rendering? Uh, I mean, we've we've looked at a few different generations of uh, of server side rendering. Um, I mean, between technical issues and and kind of business business questions, um, we haven't actually released anything. I don't think, um, but uh, it's it. Uh, I mean, just in terms of uh, you know, given your reasonable performance, um, it 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 can do that depending on exactly what you're throwing at it. 
Yeah, I, I get the business issues. A number of those platforms think they should get a chunk of your revenue just because they're, they're doing hosting for you. Yeah, that can be an issue with, uh, you know, various various types of platforms, of course. It doesn't seem to be an issue with NVIDIA GeForce now. They just want to sell you GPUs. Um, it's not like they run a social network on the side. I'm trying to remember now. There was There was one generation of this stuff a long time ago that I thought we actually did release uh, a viewer that used it, um, but it's been Somebody had a mobile view. several years, and I'm not sure, uh, I'm not sure what the, what the upshot of it was at this late date. Uh, yeah, of course we've we've mentioned that we're we're looking into mobile now, um, but uh, there have been uh, third-party mobile viewers as well. I'm not sure if there's any currently in the App Store. Or I really need a good data plan. You could really unlimited with 5G, or is unlimited a term, term of art that means 20 gigabytes a month? Yeah, it's not something that I've pushed on, but I know often there's some sort of a throttle behind the scenes. All right, any other topics for today? All right, well, I guess everyone can go have a weekend or do more work or whatever based on their time zone and preferences. Have a good one, and we'll see you next time.
Thanks everyone, see you next time.